Recently, my curiosity drove me to discover which U.S. states have endemic species confined only within the man-made borders of the state. For those who are unfamiliar with the word endemic, this refers to a species that's restricted or found in only one place. In this case, restricted within state boundaries. Now because the ranges of fish species usually correlate with river or drainage systems, and fish are obviously oblivious to man-made borders, researching this topic was a bit challenging. To my knowledge, no list like this has ever been compiled, and to be fully transparent, I'm not claiming to be an expert on this subject, and it's totally possible that there are endemic species that I have not accounted for in this video. If this is the case, rather than chastise me in the comment section, please educate me as information on the subject isn't necessarily abundant and I'd love to learn. The best way to accurately compile this information is to get it straight from those who are familiar with their local aquatic ecosystems. And I want to thank all those who helped me acquire this information through the post I made. I've researched every single fish that was mentioned in your comments, and it was very helpful. After hours of research from many sources, including my viewers, I was able to identify states with and without endemic freshwater fish. I think that this map illustrates pretty well how the southeast is dominant in freshwater fish diversity. And while a larger number of species naturally correlates with more endemics, you'll notice that the southwestern states have endemics as well despite lacking the diversity of the southeast. This goes to show that the vast deserts across these states result in many cases of species isolation, and therefore with time, more endemic species. Also, I won't ignore the fact that these states are just larger, which naturally gives them a greater probability of hosting a species that exists nowhere else. While some of these states have more than one species entirely restricted to their borders, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to list one per state. The pygmy sculpin is a tiny sculpin that has an extremely restricted range known only from Coldwater Spring and its immediate spring run in Calhoun County, Alabama. The Alaska blackfish is a very interesting freshwater fish from the Arctic found in western Alaska. Related to mud minnows and members of the Esox genus, this fish has some incredible adaptations like breathing air and surviving freezing nearly solid. Endemic to the mountains of eastern Arizona, the Apache trout is in the genus Oncorhynchus, meaning that amongst the trout species it's more closely related to cutthroat and rainbow trout as well as the Pacific salmon species. The Caddo Mad Tom is found in southwestern Arkansas in the Caddo, Wachita, and Little Missouri rivers. This is one of several Mad Toms or micro catfish endemic to one individual state. The Delta Smelt lives solely in the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta of California. This fish mainly inhabits the freshwater saltwater mixing zone of the estuary, except during the spawning season when it migrates upstream to purely freshwater. The greenback cutthroat is one of many subspecies of cutthroat in the western U.S. However, this species is just found in the borders of Colorado. Florida is a state that could have been represented by many different species, the Florida flagfish being one of them. This brilliantly colored little fish is found in the wetlands, springs, and canals of South Florida. Just in 2025, the Altamaha bass became a newly recognized species of black bass. This fish was previously considered as a member of the broader term red-eye bass. The Hawaiian freshwater goby is a remarkable little goby found only in the Hawaiian Islands and is famous for its fantastic migration, in which it possesses the ability to climb towering waterfalls. The Bonneville cisco is one of several endemic species to Bear Lake, which straddles the Utah-Idaho border. And while this isn't strictly endemic to the state of Idaho, I made an exception as the lake holds four endemic species and I just think it would be silly not to include Idaho's endemics just because Bear Lake spans a few miles into Utah. The Hoosier Cavefish is a neat little catfish that exclusively inhabits a few streams and pools in southern Indiana caves. The Arrow Darter is a beautiful little darter found only in drainages of southeastern Kentucky. This is one of many endemic darter species to be listed in this video. Maine is the only state in the far northeast that I could find to have an endemic species of freshwater fish. The Sunapee trout is actually a subspecies of Arctic char, 
This fish was once native to New Hampshire, Vermont, and Quebec, but their native range has since been shrunk down to just Maine, specifically Flood's Pond, located in the town of Otis. This fish has a really interesting story, which I hope to touch on in future videos. The Maryland darter is an extremely rare darter only known to occur in Maryland. However, the last sighting was in 1988, and unfortunately, it's now likely to be extinct. The pearl darter is another rare darter species found in southern Mississippi. It's possible that the range of this fish extends into Louisiana, but it's certainly not common. The Missouri saddle darter is a darter that is much more prevalent than the previous two, this one only occurring in the Missouri Ozarks. One of the most interesting fish on this list, the Devil's Hole Pupfish is a tiny 2 centimeter fish that exists only in a single cavern in the middle of the Nevada desert. This gives it the world's smallest range for a fish. Currently there are only 38 left in the pool, making the species extremely vulnerable to extinction and listed as critically endangered. The Pecos Pupfish is another desert pupfish found only in the Pecos River watershed in eastern New Mexico. And while it's not as rare as the Devil's Hole pupfish, this fish still has a conservation status of vulnerable. The Carolina Mad Tom is a beautiful little Mad Tom endemic to the Noose River of North Carolina. This is one of my personal favorite Mad Tom species. Ohio was also the home of an endemic Mad Tom species, but unfortunately the Scioto Mad Tom is now presumed to be extinct. The Oregon Chub is a small chub found only within the borders of the state of Oregon in the Willamette drainage. This fish was actually listed as endangered, but after many years of hard work, it was downlisted to only threatened. The Blue Barred Pygmy Sunfish is a gorgeous little fish found in South Carolina. Despite its name, it's not a true sunfish, but in the genus Elasoma, along with the other pygmy sunfishes. Tennessee is home to the Chucky Mad Tom, one of several species endemic to the state. This Mad Tom is only found in the Little Chucky and Dunn Creeks and is critically endangered. The Fountain Darter is only found in two headwater creeks of Texas, making it one of many rare darter species in this video. While most of these species are quite small, the June Sucker is one of the larger species on this list. This sucker is found only in Utah Lake in Utah County. This is another species that fortunately has been downlisted from endangered to threatened in recent years. The Clinch Dace is found only in headwater streams of the upper Clinch River in southwest Virginia. However, it is possible that its range extends into northeastern Tennessee as well. The Olympic Mud Minnow is another incredible little species only existing on the Olympic Peninsula of western Washington. This is a relative of the Alaska Blackfish, one of the first species listed in this video. But perhaps more interestingly, it's a close relative of the giant northern pike. While the historic range of the Diamond Darter once existed outside of West Virginia, it's now only thought to exist in the Elk River of West Virginia. This makes for yet another extremely rare darter species. If you found yourself curious to learn more about any of these species, I have an ongoing series on my channel called Strange and Interesting Fish of North America. I've already gone over many of these species in detail and I plan to do many more episodes. So if you'd like to learn more than just the short blips of information provided in this video, I would highly suggest you subscribe and check out those videos as well. This does a great deal to help me and it allows you to see more content that you might be interested in. I hope you enjoyed learning about some of these endemic species as much as I did and I hope to see you on the next video.